So my name is Lindsay Lunan and I'm a full-time lecturer in psychology and communication and literature at City of Glasgow College. And I've been running the Mindfulness Project here since beginning of 2012. So I thought I would maybe talk about how the project began a few years ago, uh, how we began with staff, how we began with students, um, give you a bit of an idea of what we do in mindfulness sessions, and then what some of the feedback from staff and students have been and then just talk a little bit about where we're at now and maybe where we're going with the project in the future. So the project started in January 2012. I kind of offered it just in my, in my own time at lunch times and at the end of the day, just as a kind of pilot to see if staff would be interested in doing mindfulness training. So we ran it for about six weeks, just as a drop-in. Staff could come at lunchtime or at four o'clock. And there was really positive feedback from staff, so a lot of staff interest. And uh, I think people felt they were really benefiting from the training that we were doing. So HR then kind of took it on as something that they offered as part of a well-being program for staff. And HR have been running mindfulness training for staff since that time. So we've been running three groups per week for staff. Again, where staff can just drop in at lunchtime or at the end of the day across all our different campuses in the city of Glasgow. And some staff have been coming right since the beginning 2012, so maybe two and a half years. And some staff will just do it as a kind of 12 week course. So each 12 weeks, I'll kind of start from the beginning and teach the course right from beginning principles. And then staff who are continuing on can just kind of continue to develop their practice. And the, the student project really grew out of staff feedback. So initially it was staff saying, I think this would really benefit our students. And so I approached student development and suggested to them that maybe we run some mindfulness courses for students. I have my own personal reasons for thinking about mindfulness in terms of stress management and relaxation. Um, but as a, a busy learning support practitioner, um, I thought it was also something that I would like to try out and promote to students. Um, I'm quite intrigued with the, um, the benefits so far personally, but also I'd like to see more students going along. And um, this is the first year we've had the pilot and I would be delighted if it's um, continued, especially because in learning support, we see a lot of students with anxiety and we're always looking for more and more positive and creative ways to help students manage that. So originally, again, we ran that as a pilot. Uh, we ran it as a 10-week pilot in Block 3 last year. And this time I really wanted to measure impact so I could really understand what kind of a benefit is it having, if any, when students train in mindfulness. So um, with a bit of a psychology background, I got students to complete the Beck Anxiety Inventory, which gives students a kind of score for their anxiety levels, and something called the Edinburgh Warwick Wellbeing Scale. And again, that gives students a kind of score for their perceived wellbeing. So they completed that at the beginning of the 10 weeks, and then we ran the 10 week course, and then they completed them again at the end of the 10 weeks. And what we saw almost universally for all the student participants was decreases in anxiety and increases in perceived well-being. So this, this was very encouraging as a kind of quantitative measure. Um, I was also aware that it was the end of block three, it was the beginning of summer holidays. Uh, so it was useful to try and interview students to just really get a sense of, was it really mindfulness that was making an impact on anxiety and well-being? So I interviewed uh, all the students that had taken part, 20 to 40 minutes recorded interviews, and then I kind of coded them for themes. So that's been giving me an impression of what really is it about mindfulness training that is making an impact on students' lives. I've now got a, more of an understanding about the elements that are creating some change. So maybe before I tell you a wee bit about feedback, I could tell you a little bit about what we do in a mindfulness course with staff and students. It's a little bit different from the kind of work that Michael Brady's been doing with primary school kids where he has them for a class of 45 minutes. So both with staff and with students, they're, they're dropping in. They're coming in for this kind of hour at lunchtime or at the end of the day. 
And really we start with, I guess, what would be like a foundation practice of developing the capacity of attention and concentration. So really just seeing if, if we can bring our awareness to what's happening our, in our environment right now and almost like train that muscle of attention and concentration that gives us a, a foundation of stability upon which we can then bring that attentional control to the object of our mindfulness. So then we can bring our mindfulness to uh, sensations in the body, to feeling states, to what sorts of things are happening in the thoughts. So right at the beginning, we might begin with like a 12 minute practice, quite a short practice, uh, where, where people can just get a sense of what happens. How do I adjust my posture? What does practice feel like? How does it feel to be guided? And then we're building the practice over, the, over a period of weeks. So maybe from 12 minutes to 20 minutes. And with staff and students now, we tend to be sitting between 30 and 40 minutes for full mindfulness practice. And then we're doing a range of different kind of practices that people can bring into daily life. So it might be actually just doing a practice of five minutes. Can I notice what's going on and bring my attention back to my breath? It's a kind of self-soothing breathing space. Or it might be bringing full mindfulness to the action of eating. So when I have my 11 o'clock coffee, if I'm a member of staff, can that be a moment when I can really stop and really enjoy it's quiet now and all there is is me and my coffee. So we talk about in mindfulness of eating, the food is there for us or the coffee is there for us and then we need our mind to be there for the food or there for the coffee. So we're trying to do practices that can really be used in everyday life and for students too we're working toward uh, trying to understand where tension might be held trying to understand what a feeling feels like without moving between <clears throat> the kind of poles of pushing a feeling away or ruminating on a feeling, but just bringing a kind of a gentle, maybe even a kind attention just to what's there. So actually seeing if we can tolerate particularly the difficult feelings that we're having so that students can feel less reactive, less like their buttons might get pushed, and they can just bring a quality of very soft attention and some stability, some, even some sense of control back. And then we're moving towards uh, mindfulness of thinking. So just noticing the kind of thoughts that track through the mind. And we talk about trying to recognize thoughts as passing, as transient, so like clouds, seeing where thoughts come up. And then without letting the thoughts catch hold of our experience and control our experience, to seeing if we can allow the thoughts to move through. So the practices kind of build on each other. You know, we have this grinding in attention and concentration, and upon that, then we can develop our awareness of what's going on internally. So the courses tend to run for about the period of a, a block, 10 to 12 weeks, and uh, feedback from staff and students has been really positive. I became interested in mindfulness because I had I'd read about it, about the benefits of it, and I decided to try the course. Um, the course was very well organised and we learned uh, more than one kind of medit uh, guided meditation. I was able to choose which ones suited me best. There are two things I used it for. One was just to uh, still down the busyness of my mind, which helped me just deal with day-to-day -day, um, worries and, uh, and workload. So that was very helpful at work. The other th thing that helped me with is I've got a condition where I've got chronic pain, so I was able to use the mindfulness to help me deal with the pain and that was a great benefit to me. So staff have tended to talk about mindfulness just helping them with stresses and challenges of working in further education, uh, the normal stresses of the job, um, and particularly with mindfulness of thoughts, recognising when a planning mind is becoming compulsive planning or when the mind is really getting drawn into rumination and just being able to recognize there's thinking and then seeing if we can draw the attention back to something softer, something more peaceful. So staff have talked about a better ability to sleep. Uh, some staff are using the guided practices that I'm putting on MP3s uh, when they leave work. So it creates kind of a space between the working day and then being away from the working day or on their way into work 
So it creates a space before the onslaught of work arrives. So there's been lots of positive feedback from staff just about the way it helps them manage, I guess, their working day. And from students also, um, I think one of the things that's really strongly come through for students is a feeling that it's helping them manage anxiety and difficult emotions. From day one, from the first session, um, it really worked for me. Um, I was a bit negative as in, because I was so nervous, I was so stressed at the time, I thought, well, I'm not going to be able to kind of change this habit that I've got and these triggers that go off. Um, but I was surprised um, by how I actually got into the session right away. Um, within five minutes, I could feel, you know, my, my brain, you know, wasn't buzzing. And um, I felt relaxed and I felt hopeful after the session. So there have been a few students who've come in, particularly with quite strong anxiety, that's creating almost a kind of a social phobia. And in, in feedback interviews, they talked about mindfulness, both being a way of self-soothing, but also creating a kind of community of calm where they could feel you know, almost like that's my safe place in the week, and that helped them stay at college. So two or three students have said that. For a long, long time, between the ages of 14 and 20, I had a severe problem of anxiety. It started in school and grew to the point where it affected my exams. Standard grades beyond everything was horrible. And when I tried to go back into education, it gradually got worse and I had to drop out of college and then my job, I had to leave my job as well. So it was severely affecting me. Um, I tried a lot of things. I tried prescriptions. I tried buying things off the internet that I probably shouldn't have. And I tried putting myself in challenging social situations. And none of those things had the effect that I wanted. Um, but you'll notice that I said those things only affected me till the age of 20. I am now 21. And mindfulness has made a significant change in how I'm able to go about my day-to-day -day business. And students with autism also who've come to the mindfulness group are finding quite practical strategies that they can use to help them with anxiety. A lot of students have also talked about uh, using practices to help them get to sleep at night. Uh, students have talked about a greater focus in class, so particularly when we're doing the lunchtime groups, that they've gone back into their afternoon classes and they feel more awake. So one student said it was like having a night's sleep in 20 minutes, and that when she went back into class, uh, her classmates had actually asked her, what's happened to you? You look really different. So it's just a feeling of kind of refreshment. And some students have also um, talked about an ability to recognise their unhelpful thinking patterns, which I think is wonderful. So actually being able to see those are just thoughts and I don't need to pay attention to them. I had trouble with depression a couple of years ago um, and I suppose I've become interested in ways of managing um, my, my feelings especially but also just ways of, of looking at life and dealing with the problems that come along in a, an objective way. I've found it really useful to just take time, um, just just to be really, I suppose, and not not be caught up with thinking about everything that's going on and and sort of reacting to everything. It's it's very useful just to have a step back from everything. Um, I tend to be quite busy and usually always active, but. I've found it so useful just taking 20 minutes occasionally to sit down and, and really centre myself. And what's been really encouraging, I think, is when, when it clicks with students, it really clicks with students. So some a journalism student has written articles on mindfulness. He's interested in training and how to teach others in mindfulness. I have a student who's been writing short stories about mindfulness. Um, a sports science student who's been using it as part of her graded unit as a kind of intervention in sports therapy. So they're also finding ways of applying it into their vocational training, which is kind of a hope of mine for the future, that we could 
uh, teach it to students who are studying social care or um, early years childcare and they could see the ways that they could use it in their working lives in the future as well as to support them in their social emotional life. It's also been very very helpful for me uh, with regards to my course. Um, part of my course um, includes sports psychology and I've become aware that mindfulness is used in sport um, a lot whether it's um, for events or whether it be like um, in rehabilitation. So it's been really helpful for my course as well. And it's put into perspective, you know, that it can be used in all different situations. My lecturers, two lecturers have noticed, they've said there's been a huge difference in you since first year. My girlfriend's noticed um, the results are evident in my, my college work. I'm able to um, try and get more challenging interviews. I just feel that I've got more ambition and thing, more things are possible. I can't just settle for being unhappy. You know, things are possible if you um, attempt the mindfulness because I've been trying to do it every week, maybe just 10 minutes. And it's from the first session onwards, I've I just noticed something different in my general disposition. And I want to keep practicing mindfulness wherever I go in future. So maybe last of all, it's useful to speak about where we're going next with the project. So in the year ahead, in the year to come, HR will continue to run these projects for staff. So staff can continue to drop into mindfulness training throughout all the different campuses of the college. And we're going to continue to run a drop-in student mindfulness programme where students can be referred through student development and can drop into mindfulness sessions. So we'll run that through the three blocks of the year. But what I'm also planning on doing this year is offering a PDA, a Professional Development Award in Mindfulness Teacher Training, uh, which I'll run from August. And the intention there is to um, offer the PDA for staff who have a somewhat established mindfulness practice. So they've maybe been practicing six months or a year, a couple of years and they can train in how to teach mindfulness to students so that we can really see if we can move um, a mindfulness teaching approach through the college so that there are more staff with the ability to pass this on to students in each faculty across the college. So when I'm thinking about things like the Rogart Street campus where I work this year, uh, a campus with a lot of kind of young lads, some of who've come in through probation services, through prison services, um, boys that were talking about using mindfulness to help them specifically with anger. I think it'd be really great if we've got staff there who know that student group and who are able to speak in a language that's to do with kind of construction. Uh, they liked a lot of stuff on kind of self-control and be able to be part of their team and offering them mindfulness as part of the teaching that's offered at that campus. And in each different campus, the social care campuses, the campuses that are more for art students, for drama students, for sports students, where mindfulness can kind of be adapted through the knowledge of the, the staff member and their knowledge of that subject, integrated with their knowledge and their, their own practice of mindfulness. And in that way, I think to try and make, to try and make mindfulness part of the culture of how we teach. So there's an ethic of well-being in the way that we teach, that we're able to take care of our own experience when we go into a classroom environment and then we're able to offer that through our teaching to help students find ways to support their own well-being.